Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. One of the biggest issues that the world faces today is there's not enough water and rain, and there's too much water and rain. Depends on where you are, whether you're north, south, east, west. It really depends on your local climate as far as the amount of water that you're getting and whether it's sufficient for the humans, the animals, the crops, the trees, everything around you, including the microorganisms in the ground, as whether things are growing and flourishing or actually dying and going in the opposite direction. So we're bringing uh, the, a new idea that actually has been evolving over several years in Washington, D.C. and the United States. And it's something that really is catching the world's notice and it's catching on very rapidly on the African continent, Latin America, South Seas, and also in Asia and some in Europe as well. And so we want to share that with you. And this is really gonna be more of almost like a training video but at the same time, it really is our normal, the Emerald Planet TV broadcast. This is called Rain Gardens, Bayscaping, and Urban Forest, Supporting Nature to Save the Planet. And this is really very important. And we collaborated with the emblems that you see here, the Department of Energy and Environment, which is a huge supporter of the environment and doing fantastic work in Washington, D.C. Also, the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, which is looking at all the tributaries and the watersheds that are flowing in the Chesapeake Bay, how to save it, remediate it, and actually improve it before the water reaches the Atlantic Ocean. And then Monaterra LLC, which is really the backbone of what this program is all about. This again is about rain gardens, basecaping and urban forest and Bonaterra LLC, which is a firm here and, and a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. is working with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay Department of Energy and Environment, DOEE, and also with Casey Trees. We need to give them recognition as well as some of the images you'll be seeing in these gardens that are coming up will be from Casey Trees. But looking at the Landscaping Homeowner's Guide, this is something that's very important. We share this uh, with people around the globe. Uh, this is a River Smart program. Uh, this is the one we're talking about is River Smart Homes. And also there's the River Smart Communities. All of these combined together can really take the excess water we're getting on the East Coast, particularly in Washington, D.C., and capture that, process it, store it in the ground, increase the water table at the same time to improve the quality of water that's in the ground and also to slow it down and to remove all the pathogens, the viruses, everything that's in there, including heavy metals, pesticides, insecticides, fertilizers, all of these things that are determining the quality of our water. And looking at this emblem that we have here, the various ways that actually uh, the things that I was talking about, the heavy metals, the chemicals, 
uh, even the plastics and the trash that washes off the streets, off the roads, uh, goes into the underground aquifers, into the streams, rivers, uh, creeks, ponds. Everything is being contaminated by this excess runoff and everything that's left in an urban environment. And as you may remember from previous, the Emerald Planet television programs, 80%, 80% of the population now in the United States, uh, in a country like Brazil, 87% of the population now live in urban areas. So what you're seeing in front of us is a challenge worldwide. Now, what we're talking about as far as the rain gardens, basecaping, and urban forest is to change everything we've thought about as landscaping in the past over the last two to three hundred years. It's a long time. Three centuries, even four centuries, to go back to where we were using native species, which goes back to 400 years, and to change the dynamic of capturing the water and at the same time to increase the amount of water through transpiration is actually released into the environment to increase rainfall. So you see these four plants to our left, the non-natives, these were introduced, many of them from European communities and other localities uh, into the United States, North America. And you see how shallow these roots are. And then if you go to the natives, you can see how they adapted to the local conditions, both the drought and the excess water, and how deep these root structures go. I'm not really gonna give you the names of these plants because these will change community by community, sometimes even with a, a few dozen miles from where you'll be sitting, or where you're living. Uh, so you need to talk with the, the garden shops within your own local area uh, feed and seed stores if you're out in rural areas about what are the native plants that are available to you. But the native plants have adapted to the soil, the air, the water, uh, the amount of sunshine, the uh, intensity of the rain, although that is increasing, and we'll talk about that. And then also as far as drought conditions and how they were able to take the moisture from the air through the mist and dew, and also from the rain and transfer that down through these very deep root systems. So we want the natives on the right side. Uh, as you replace your plants, you may wanna get rid of non-natives, and that's important to remember. Now, looking at uh, the conditions of the uh, basecaping and the rain gardens, you'll see on the left side, the before, see the erosion that's here, uh, just very uh, short grass was protecting this with the intensity of the rains was washing off. If you look to the right side with the mulch and the new native species, you can see a very different scene. This is absolutely the same uh, shot, the same land, the same environment, but with very different plantings. And you can see the difference with the, on the left side, the non-native species, the right side, the native species. Now doing this, you want to have a very detailed plan about how you're going to address the issue and how do we affect and impact on the long-term of using the native species and also the uh, landscaping that surrounds this. And also one of the secret sauces of this whole thing is mulch chopped up wood, if you want to uh, give it a very common name. And so in many areas of the world where they have uh, huge uh, plantations, this could be palm oil, could be coconut, uh, other types of uh, food producing uh, and fiber producing uh, trees, many of these are diseased or dying and also some are declining in production. So you can take the wood chips uh, from these types of uh, biomass and turn it into something very useful, which is the mulch that uh, you uh, can see in the photographs and also to interspace these and to solidify the soil, capture the water, process it, and raise the water table 
through very wise designs, plantings, and the use of mulch. Uh, this is the one that's where I am, and this is our prototype uh, rain gardens, basecaping, and urban forest, all in a very highly built environment. And yet at the same time, you're going to see the transformation of this combination of a very good yet simple design at the same time using the proper native plants and also to be able to properly capture the rainwater. And uh, you're going to see some scenes of that as far as this rainwater, how it's captured, then it's processed through these rain gardens and basecaping and urban forest, goes into the ground, raises the water table, at the same time, it's purifying because it's eliminating the various chemicals and the other pathogens as well as heavy metals that will be coming out in the water. This is the, uh, the first. This is kind of the mothership, you will, of the rain gardens. And this is where you actually have a swell. A swell is where you have a depression in the earth that actually as the rainfall or the runoff comes into this, it's actually captured, and then it allows that water to slowly percolate into the soil. And you can see the plants that we have here, uh, they look uh, very vigorous, tall, robust, even though this is a black and white image, uh, but it's easy to see. And what you do is you go from uh, the inflow of where you're taking the downspout, or it could be runoff naturally, that's going around uh, your house coming out of your gardens uh, and your own wooded areas around your home in a, in a city, town, or village. And you have a trough this water flows into, slows it down, and then it goes into the swell. And these plants will go from water tolerant to water loving uh, to uh, accepting uh, wet feet, if you will, that's what we call it in the colloquial term, and then back to the water tolerant types of plants as you get to the back of the swell. But the swell usually is the soil that has been taken out of the earth, and then it's mixed. If you see the grainy nature of that, that's actually mixed with the mulch. So this will give you an idea of what all of this process looks like uh, on the right side, you'll see uh, a perk test being taken, how fast the water will uh, be absorbed into the ground. And so this goes down uh, one to two feet, uh, fill it with water, and then you time it to see how fast it's going to perk, meaning how fast it goes into the soil. Very important. Uh, this is a photograph taken right from my own gardens here. Uh, then you'll see the, the various landscaping that's going on here, both uh, with the basecaping and then also with the rain gardens. But all of this, again, is to slow down and capture the water. Uh, this will give you an idea of the images of what some of these rain gardens actually look like. Uh, the one on the left is a rain garden. On the right is basecaping. And this is pavers that are used to capture it, and you can see the native species planted around this, very important, uh, to capture that water, let it go into the ground, and then the root structures can absorb it. This will give you an idea of the native species, how they can be planted on both sides of a sidewalk. And then in the background behind this uh, small tree, shrub is a rain barrel and you can see the water being captured off of the roof and going into the rain barrel and also into the rain garden itself. Thank you for uh, letting me take you through this as far as explaining to you what is a rain garden, basecaping and urban forest, our colleagues and collaborators in this as we create the Emerald Planet.